Today's principals have to be entrepreneurial. They have to be extraordinarily hard workers. They have to be very, very smart and first and foremost instructional leaders. They have to be able to work with the community. It's a, it's a wide variety of skill sets. But then they, what I really measure is our principal's heart. How much do they really believe our children can be successful? How much do they really believe that we can be much better tomorrow than we were today or yesterday? My name is Teresa D. Dunbar, and this is my second year as principal of Henry H. Nash Elementary School. Being a principal is a wonderful way to affect change in the world. Children are going to go out into the world and do great things, my children, and I get to be a part of them. I love my kids, and better than that, my kids love me. Nobody in the city has that on me, nobody. I have 12 new teachers, and a majority of them have no idea about how to manage a classroom. And it's not their fault. They're learning. They're learning how to teach. And I want to learn how to be a good principal. It's like my teachers. I have so much compassion for them because I know they don't know. So what's my responsibility? to give them space and time to make mistakes because someone gave me the space and time to make mistakes and look at where I'm at. My name is Carrie Purcell and I've been the principal at Harvard Park for six years. I pledge I became a principal because I want to change the world, really, and I believed that I had the skill set to help teachers become better teachers so that students could be more successful in the classroom and in life. Six years ago when I came Go. to Harvard Park, the building was in crisis on a number of levels. You can do it this, but you can do it. Go. Well. Good. Teacher morale was extremely low, um, behavior was out of control, and test scores were in the gutter. Now we have a 92% attendance rate. And over time, our test scores have improved dramatically. Today, if there stop. How you doing, love? Good. We're supposed to be instructional leaders. That's the new term. Leaders who focus on instruction, who focus on good teaching. You have to be in the classrooms to see the teachers. You have to talk to the students and be in the room to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay? How do you know that Joey's mother is disappointed that she won't be able to take pictures? Angel? They left his project behind. Because they left the project behind. That's the evidence. Every conclusion has to have what? Mrs. Stadahar is uh, one of the strongest teachers that I have. She is a teacher who really, really sets her goals up well, explains to her students what's supposed to happen, and makes sure that they're getting what they're supposed to get. Minerals and all kinds of test tubes and big. How do you know? Give me three examples. That's a great classroom. She's just absolutely one of my best all day long. Mrs. Dubin had been the Head Start teacher for the last nine or ten years, but we needed to have more support at the first grade level. So she was asked to take the first grade class. We recognized quite quickly that she needed support. I've been having days where I just can't hold, I mean, I come home and I'm crying and I'm miserable. We are not doing enough to support you. And I feel bad about that because the question became, how are we going to support her 
when we also had 10 other teachers who were new. You know, you can do it, but we have to help you. We have to help you. We're going to put Ms. King in with you. She's going to model for you. She's okay. going to give you strategies and practical advice that you can do, but I want you to learn it because, I, okay. you know, I can't keep her in there with you. No, I understand. And then we're going to do everything we can. Thank you. Okay? Mrs. Dubin wants to do better. The last three weeks, we've had a teacher in there modeling for her retired teacher, Mrs. King, who's been working with her and who's been in several other roles. Are you ready? Together. What word is this? Bye. Bye. All right, what's the next word? Yay. What's the next word? What does plow mean? The planning, the organization, the structure of the room, the transitions. That all has to come from the teacher. Mrs. King is modeling it, but you're supposed to take it, look at it, ask questions, be led in that direction, and then when you have the opportunity, you know, kind of soar with it yourself. What letter is that? Oh, no. You don't know? Miss Dubin has to go. But she's going because I've done all that I can do the other administrators have done all they can do, and she hasn't done all she can do. Failing as a teacher. This is a hard job. When you're getting rid of someone, they're losing their livelihood. I don't want to be responsible for that unless I have to. But when I have to, it happens. I substituted down the, the hall before, stage. so I got to see what was going on and I saw students running, and I saw students fighting, and it hurt me to see the students weren't learning. So when I came in, I came in with my heart open. It's frustrating at times. It is rough at times. But I get up the next morning and say, give them something they didn't get yesterday. Try harder to give them whatever they're missing. And that's all I can do. OK, so the main problem is our children are not comprehending. Because, because, because. Um, does anyone want to start why you think that might be? I don't know that they're evaluating their text. They're not going back and rereading. One of my greatest passions is to build leadership within those people that I work with, both teacher leaders and future principal leaders. Mm -hmm. And gave back feedback right away. So Friday I responses. I love that idea. <laughs> I think the whole um, idea of feedback is so important. And if it's not immediate, it's not worth giving. Do whatever you need to do to get some privacy, OK? This is a personal activity. It says list all the instructional activities that you've done. So please go ahead and list those. I saw some things earlier this week and last week that I was not happy with, and I just feel we're going in the wrong direction. So I really had to work on how I was going to present this information to them. Now I want you to draw a circle around all the instructional activities that you performed this week that were of high quality. These are some great teachers. They're great instructors, but they're not doing what they can do. I want you to list the lowest performing student in your class. Give me the name of the lowest performing student in your class. I then want you to tell me how you know he's the lowest. What evidence do you have that tells you he's the lowest? The only way they can own it is if I give it to them in a manner that makes them reflect upon their own practices and techniques. Why do you think that I did that activity? What do you think some of the reasons are that I did that activity? Sometimes we don't take the time to sit down and look at how we're doing, what we're doing, and what steps we're taking. So by doing this activity, you're forcing us to take the time that we need for ourselves to recognize our performance and our performance as a school. Wow, nothing else I guess I need to say, huh? <laughs> Who was the man? It's been counseled. Jamil had threatened a, a young man, and then he displayed the knife by pulling up his sleeve. And one of our teacher's aides had witnessed this, and 
So what happened, she reported to me, and I had to go through the procedure. And um, Jamil has a hearing that will be coming up in a few weeks. The knife incident. Now, you did know that that wasn't allowed in the schools, correct? Yeah, I did. You know, you know it was wrong. What was your reason to have, a, you know, a weapon on you, though? One time when I, at school, when I was leaving, I got jumped on by a couple of kids that was over there on the other side. The procedure usually is they're gonna mail a letter to your mom, and you're gonna have to go to the well, downtown office. Yeah. Uh, my mom, she, I'm not with her no more, though. Cause I'm with my auntie now, cause my mom, she uh, got into some stuff and went to jail. Your your mom and your dad is it in and out? You know, most of my life, my grandma been taking care of me. You know, every now and then, my mama she'll get out. You know, she'll stay good for a couple of months. She'll get her a good job, and then she'll just mess up and go back. Not saying that I hate my mama, but I love her. But you know, it just in and out, in and out. And and now I'm kind of used to it. It's nothing I can really say because, like, my heart, like, it, it took to it already. Like, it's nothing different. Everything's always the same. Tell me about growing up in the in the neighborhood. Once you leave Nash, what what is it that you have to deal with? Well, one thing in this type of environment, you can't really have feelings. As in feelings, I mean like kind of like care for people. Like, it's all basically about. If you can't fight and you ain't tough enough, you really ain't nothing like just be get it, get or be got. Basically like that. It's like my dream was to leave basically this place, you know, to get away from all this. What I really wanted to do is become a cook because I like cooking a lot. It's not easy because I know it's not easy at all. Something that you gotta really you, pay attention to. You, you know what, Jamil? Whatever you wanna do, you can do it. But you gotta wanna do it. You gotta put yourself in a position where you're gonna stay in school and you're gonna follow your dreams. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. You just have to persevere. You know what that means? Try your best. There you go. You just stick with it. Just stick with it. working together to achieve outstanding results. This is Jane Michelson. How may I help you? I pushed them once, and they, them two just came, they jumped me. You didn't put your hands on them? Just once. Just once, one too many times. Stand up, stand up, come over here. Go. No, look at him. Sorry, I can call you a chocolate key. That's not right. Go. Sorry for pushing you. I'm sorry. Get a pass, get a pass. Thank you for handling it like young men. It's much better than last year. While you're here, you have to keep your hands, feet, and all other objects to yourself. There's no stealing, there's no lying, there's no hands on people. You're lucky that they're nice fellas. They're twice your size. Anything else you need to tell me? Okay, get a pass. Find her out. We have to put some kind of intervention of sorts in place for him. Our discipline team meets every week to address the social emotional needs of our students. Today we are meeting about Norrell. She said I'm getting dad and dad got on the phone. Well, the most recent is continued level three violations. He pushed them through scissors at a friend. Two days ago, he got one for throwing an eraser. Um, he was yelling at the teacher, roaming inappropriate conversations. Those were the three from this month. And he had a bus And then he had eight yesterday total. Yesterday that was this involving night. fourth graders. Are so, we targeting the wrong kids? Well, I don't think we're targeting the wrong kids because these are targeted kids. Mm -hmm. I just think maybe yeah. we're not doing enough. One of it's them just getting that personal connection with one adult in the building hopefully over time building trust so that the child will say, I didn't have such a good day. I wonder if you can help me figure out what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. How's my good buddy doing today? How's my good friend Norrell doing? 
How was the bus ride yesterday? Did you make safe choices? Did Trayvon make safe choices? Sunshine, did Trayvon make safe choices? It's not discipline issues that we're dealing with. Anthony make safe choices? It's meeting the needs of the total child, which goes far beyond punishment or consequences. watering flowers last night. Oh. Yours look a lot better than mine. My first year I stood on every single porch. I went to everybody's house my first year to let them know who I was, that I was happy to be at Harvard Park, that I was happy to have their child, and that I was here to be of service to them. Welcome to ISET night. We're really, really, really glad that you're here. Um, we know that we can't do this work without your help and support. Um, so we thank you so much for um, really caring about your children. Um, I told them, school is the ticket out. If you want a better life for your child or a different life for your child, then we have to work together to make this happen. And then we just started one family at a time. We would bring on board. I have five sides, and I can be found in Washington, D.C. A night like tonight is really important for the children. We have to participate in their learning and encourage them so they'll be interested in participating. I am a 3D shape with six square faces and all my edges. We have many events which support family engagement. And this event is all about bringing awareness and understanding of the State Achievement Test. Great. OK, first, lingo, bingo. Good job, Corey. Give him a round of applause. Today we're having a walkthrough, which is when representatives from the area office come and they walk around and observe our school and give us pointers on what they think we can improve. We're not looking to find anything bad. We're looking to see what the practices are and no matter what we see, how can we improve for the benefit of the students. Personification. Yeah. The walkthrough process is very important because it helps us instructionally to know how we can do a better job, and I think it's valuable. But as a school on probation, I need so much more help, and the funding's not there for that. Let's do a walkthrough of the classrooms to see how many kids have fathers, how many children have parents who are incarcerated and who are angry how many children don't care about trying to put a word on the word wall because they haven't seen their mother in three or four days or three or four weeks. I'd like to have a walkthrough about why we don't have any social workers, uh, why I have a part-time social worker, why I just have one counselor, one case manager. And that doesn't mean that instruction is not important because it is. All children must have a quality education. I believe in that and they must have it but we have to start really looking at what we're holding schools accountable for. Sixty-eight words. Sixty-eight words. Oh my goodness. Every decision we make in this building is around data. What is the data telling us that's working right? What is the data telling us that's not working? And what are our next steps going to be? During our regular monthly assessment, we discovered that 80% of our students in second grade were performing below grade level in reading, math, and writing. Love and yellow. Is this where they were at the beginning of the yes. year? Okay. Where they are, and yet you can see. Carrie's pulled in a few resources. Um, we've tried to pull in resources ourselves to help us out, and it's just a big, big struggle with the low scores. What each one of them are doing, you know, and who. So, I mean, my goal this year is to get 95% of our students proficient in both reading and math. Take away seven? Yes. We're currently at 65%. 30% is going to take a lot of hard work. Prior 
Hawaiian star. 20 to 50. I thought it worked out. What'd you say? I thought it worked out. That's awesome. Ow. Oh my gosh, Nina. 105, 149. We test our kids every month on how many words that they can read per minute. And you know what? Not to get into your private business, but if you would come to school more often, your score would go lickety split up. Mm -hmm. I want my kids to know their number and when they've shown improvement. David Mackey. 42 to 67. Good job. Did everybody go up? Yeah. 133. That's like fifth grade. Good job, Daryl. Good job, Daryl. Are you making fun of me? with the bad war. We do some tough things here in Chicago and where we have some schools where they're not moving as fast as we'd like and that have been resistant to change, we've taken a hard line and closed schools for academic failure. None of the students are moving. But we just have a set of objective criteria and if your school falls below that, we're gonna look very, very carefully at whether we keep it alive or whether we do something dramatically different and turn it around.